uh, more about uh, the potential of API integrations and, uh, and common traps and advice. Um, so Matthew, welcome. Thank you, John. And got your uh, deck up. All right, I will leave you to it. Okay, thank you. So hi, everyone. And uh, welcome to this presentation of potential of API integration, common tribes and advices. So I'm Mathieu, I'm the founder of Meta API. Um, I'm French, obviously. Um, just a few words about my uh, previous experiences. So I had my epiphany when I was working for a post-production company. I understood there um, the power of API inside the company, which needed a total digital transformation uh, with a very small team. So this openness allows us to work step by step using previous projects to improve the new ones. And a few words also about my startup experience. Um, there I anticipate scalability problem, take the most of the stateless approach for this and thinking about a transition from monolithic to microservices architecture. So uh, what we'll talk about, we'll talk about uh, API integration and why you need them for your project, uh, the easy way to do them, the other way with tips and common traps and at the end, a quick demonstration of Meta API, our all-in-one integration platform. So, uh, to start, API integration and why you need them. Um, API will create a bridge between your product and other product or services. So, it's a very effective way to extend your application potential, especially on user experience. Uh, think about bringing all your customer tools inside your own apps, like Slack, for example. It will give you uh, the opportunity to create premium offer for your user. Um, you can enhance productivity. Uh, API can automate data exchange between application, and you can create fast building tools for your tips. Um, at last, you can also have new partnership. It will allow to sharing data and services with other company and help you to be integrated to other ecosystem. So that will bring and generate you new revenue. So uh, and on the right, you, you can see a study from Cloud, Cloud Elements, uh, which confirm this free positive impact on uh, businesses. So to start, uh, the easy way to, to make an API integration is to use the SDK. Uh, the, an SDK will give you the best for a specific API without the need to study the, all the documentation and give to developers the best experience possible with features like type variable, uh, easy to use function, uh, easy error management, management, for example. Um, SDK are great, but limited to only few actors. Uh, you can see some of them like Stripe, Google, or AWS, but let's see now how you can do that manually without an SDK. So be prepared and have a nice tool to play with API before before starting your integration inside your code, because that will allow you to figure out what parameter you will use and how you can share your test requests with other developers. Um, here are some tools like Postman, Upscotch, or Insomnia. Then uh, find a great HTTP client uh, for your for your languages. Um, at Meta API, we love Axios, for example. Uh, which is working both on browser and on node. So we can use the same library across all our stack. And um, there is also a great interceptor system uh, inside Axios. So that, that's for uh, the preparation. Now we will see what document traps to avoid. So first, uh, OR2. OR2 is a, 
is a big piece because it's both it will buff your best friend and your worst nightmare. Um, why your best friend? Uh, this authentication protocol has came a standard uh, because it provides um, a secure way to access user data while keeping user in control of this data. Uh, for example, if you want to access email on Gmail, uh, user give you an authorization to access only specific data. For example, only the metadata of this email. And why it will be your nightmare? Because uh, OR2 need an implementation both on client and server side, uh, which bring complexity, routing management, security, etc. So find a great lib to integrate it inside your own application. Uh, there is another way. You can use uh, OR2 proxy. There are some standard projects about this, like uh, a serverless version of the grant library. So I did not try myself this solution, but um, if you have some experience to share on the chat, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, next, data transformation. Uh, you will find all kinds of JSON uh, during API integration. So you will have some good ones containing all the types provided by JSON, but also some bad ones with, you know, string everywhere, which which is a pain to, to, to work with, and you will need a uh, passing everywhere. So um, sometimes you will find also um, XML uh, format. So you will need a, a specific data transformation layer and an help from a library to, to transform all the data. Uh, next, some word about rate limiting. Uh, every API have now um, a rate limited implemented to prevent uh, server overload. So sometimes the limits are very high and are irrelevant for, for your usage, but other time limits are very low and you will need to take them in consideration. So think about scalability and how many API requests uh, your app will have to make and how it will grow. And uh, you have some great libraries to manage rate limiting without adding too much complexity inside your code. Next, about cache. Cache is great to accelerate requests, especially on static and slow changing data. So network requests to external services are one of the slowest operation you have inside an application. So the, the aim is to move this kind of request on a faster support like memory, databases, Redis, for example, or specialized services. So th there is no uh, silver bullet, silver bullet on this. Um, you have to to choose the right solution, which is very specific to your use case and your architecture. So now let's move to some some tips I can give to you. Um, the the first one and the most important is to create an abstraction layer uh, inside your your app. So. Think abstraction like bricks, very easy to use across your application, hiding all the complexity like paginating, authentication, etc. So it will be easier to update in case of API changes like data schema. Um, it will bring you more flexibility. Uh, you can anticipate, for example, an API's breakdown or have a strategic switch. Uh, for example, um, Google Maps raised their price a few years ago. So uh, having this attraction that will allow you to anticipate these costs and make a switch, for example, to Mapbox or OpenStreetMap without changing all your application. And uh, you can also aggregate multiple services. Um, an abstraction layer, for example, to manage email from both Gmail and Office 365, 
um, to aggregate project uh, management tickets like Jira, Basecamp, etc. Um, you can also generate your own SDK from an uh, open API specification file. Uh, many services use, use them, uh, MailChimp, for example. But this pseudo SDK can bring you a better developer experience, but it will act more like an abstraction than a full feature SDK. So um, if, you're, if you are interested in this, there is a, a conference this afternoon at 2 p.m. Um, and uh, you should check out. And uh, some word about logging. Um, I'm sure you you have already a logging system on your application, but you should have take care of API error differently because an early implementation it will bring very basic error like undefined variables. So you rather want to know what kind of error you are facing off and maybe implement different behavior be based on this error. For example, trigger another API or have a local fallback. Um, most of the time, HTTP error code are very relevant and will help you, so log them. And there are some tools like Bearer or Tremble that can automate that it for you, uh, or you can do it uh, internally with your own logging system and, for example, trigger some messages on Slack. So um, just have a quick summary about uh, what, what I talk about. Uh, first, uh, think about having something working right out the box. Um, the first start is to use an official SDK. But if you don't have an SDK, uh, do it manually. Um, find a, a great client, Postman, Upscotch, or Sonia, for example. Find a great HTTP library. Create an abstraction layer for more control. And be careful of OR2 implementation. Then you can take care of the future uh, to secure and optimize your integration. Uh, but some logs and alerts um, in the case of um, a breaking API. Uh, anticipate the rate limiting uh, if it's relevant for you. Improve your abstraction layer to more control and more flexibility. And um, at last, uh, put some cash if you are dealing with uh, static or slowly changing data. So um, I will now show you how at Meta API we combine all of this uh, inside and uh, how we glue them together inside our own platform. Um, so I will switch here to our interface. So um, I, I will show you uh, all the interface from a, a developer's perspective. Um, so on the right, I have here uh, a code editor, which uh, I can write uh, JavaScript and TypeScript code. So there I can call um, new connectors. For example, so we have an all library where I can use um, ready to use connectors, but I can also create my own connector with uploading the um, open um, open API specification file. Hey, hey, Matthew, uh, yes. just one moment. Um, now that you've changed to sharing your, your screen, um, the text, um, probably great on your machine, but through the, the conference platform, uh, it's quite small. Is it possible for you to expand the, uh, the text to zoom in a little bit more? That will be better, like this? It's a little better. Ah, OK. Uh, can you make it even more? I will try um, more. Is it too much? Uh, maybe a little bit too much. Well, OK. As much as you can. <laughs> OK, no problem. So. I can add some connectors. Um, for example, here I have a connector 
of Google Maps, we we implement some nice feature like um, a, a dedicated uh, interface where I can uh, update the authentication system. So we support all kinds of authentication system like um, HTTP um, and OA2, of course. I have here, so all the field I can fill with um, static data or variables. Um, here inside our code editor, I can use, we build um, our own um, auto completion system, which is based on the JSON response. Um, we can give you uh, all the detail about um, about the response of the API. Um, then we also build uh, an integrated um, test request and test panel. So you don't have to use uh, an external tool to, um, to test your implementation. Um, if, you, if you need to go uh, further with data transformation, uh, data manipulation, we integrate um, as a NPM library to import um, external library inside your code. So it's very it's very nice to to improve um, all all your code. And then uh, once all of this is finished, you can create a new release and deploy it uh, directly inside our infrastructure. And um, it's very quick. So um, if you have, um, for example, if you have to, to make a change, a quick change, because an, an API has a problem or something like that, you just have to change the code and adapt the, the code here on the right, uh, draft a new release and deploy. And in one or two minutes, uh, everything will go fine. And we will generate for you uh, your own uh, API endpoint to consume all the data. And of course, and the most important, um, you will have access to logs. So you can track uh, every request made on your, um, uh, on your own implementation, track the execution time, so you request size, uh, all the connectors called um, during this request, and we, we, we make some automatic check, like um, validating the open, um, open API specification uh, schema, both on request and response. So um, that, that's how we implement all these uh, tips and all the common tries you, you should avoid on your, on your API implementation, uh, we implement it all of them inside our own platform. So that's it. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, now no, I will switch to, to, to John if you have any question and, uh, and um, if you want to reach me by email or check out our website, uh, please, uh, please, uh, we are pleased to, to see you. Thanks very much, uh, Matthew, for, for sharing those uh, those tracks and, and, and tricks. Um, I appreciate the the different uh, the different points you brought up. I have a quick question about um, caching. Do you, do you have a particular recommendation for the best method of, of caching uh, the response? Um, the the easy way is to 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 do some uh, memory caching. Uh, but it could be unadapted if you have, um, you know, distributed endpoint and the distributed ar architecture. So in this case, uh, you have to switch uh, on um, Redis database, for example, to have the, the distribution of cache uh, around all your uh, infrastructure. Uh -huh. Okay. Redis, Redis is, a, is, a, is a great way to start with caching. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks. For lo lots of uh, practical uh, tips in there.